Now, there are some other versions of means that are sometimes used. So, the problem with the mean is that it's horribly sensitive to outliers. You bring in one outlier and you can dramatically change the value of the mean. The problem with the median is that it's horribly insensitive. Uh, it's, it's too insensitive in a lot of cases, as, as we'll see uh, next week. So, some other uh, versions of the mean have been developed that, that, uh, that I, I think of them as halfway houses between the mean and the median. So let's talk about those right now. Let's say we have this data set. Notice this data set has a lot of small values, nine values between zero and five, and then it has somewhat of an outlier, 20. Now if we find the simple mean, the, the simple mean is 4.8, indicating the typical value is out here someplace. But that value is inflated by that single out, outlier. So one, um, one measure of, of, the, of a typical value that is um, more robust than the mean but more sensitive than the median is called the, the trimmed mean. So let me show you the value of the trimmed mean. The idea of the trimmed mean, is, so you're going to trim a certain percentage of the cases from either tail of the distribution. Let's consider the 10% trimmed mean. What that means is that I'm going to drop 10% of the cases from one tail and 10% of the cases from the other tail. Therefore, I'm left with the values 2 through 5 here. And now since I've trimmed away two observations, I'm going to have to divide by 8. Now the trimmed mean is 3.375, which is a fair bit less than the 4.8. So that 4.8 was pulled out by the 20. An alternative version is called the Windsorized mean. Now the Windsorized mean has a benefit that you don't lose data. So when I, when I trim 10% from each tail, it's like I'm throwing out 20% of my data. And often it's quite, um, you know, um, expensive to gather data points, so you don't want to just throw it out. So the Windsorized data allows you to keep observations in your data set without, uh, without having outliers exert undue influence on these measures of central tendency. So here's the idea. Any value less than the 10th percentile gets set equal to the 10th percentile. Any value greater than the 90th percentile is going to get set equal to the 90th percentile. I know I haven't in, in, introduced the concept of a percentile yet. That'll come in a few minutes. But uh, let, me, let me show you exactly how this works. So any value less than that second number in, in this list of 10 numbers will get equal, set equal to the second number. So that 1 becomes a 2 that any value greater than that 5 gets set equal to 5. Then we average the numbers and we divide by 10 this time. The Windsorized means 3.4, which is about the same as the trimmed mean. Again, it's um, uh, unaffected by that extreme value of 20. To compute these in SPSS, let's go back to SPSS and I will show you how to do um, to, to find trimmed means. Let's find the trim mean of down payment. So go into Analyze, Descriptives. So we've been here before, and we've been to Frequencies. Now we're going to go down to, to Explore. So Analyze, Descriptives, Explore. This is a very important function in SPSS. It gives you all the descriptives that we're talking about today. Let's copy down payment into the dependent list. And that's about all you have to do. Go hit OK. And a moment later, you will get this box. Now you'll see that the median is 109. Sorry, the mean is $199. If you go three lines down, you get the 5% trim mean. So the, the trimmed mean is 146. And the median is only 100. And uh, that that illustrates the relationship that we saw that I, that I sketched out earlier. So those extreme values in the tail, remember from our, our inspection of the histogram last time that some people were putting $10,000 down. 
uh, in fact that's shown here, actually $9,371, those values inflate the mean. Now, they are not going to uh, inflate the trimmed mean as much because you know, we, we trim away that part of the tail and then the median, of course, is less than the trimmed mean. So that, that's a very common pattern right there. So again, the point is, if, if, you, if you need to find the trim mean of a distribution, you can use descriptives. Likewise, if you want to find the mean or the median. Now let's go back to the course packet for a second. Um, I called these a halfway house between the mean and the median. Here's why. The 0% trimmed mean, or the 0% Windsorized mean, is just the mean. So if you think about trimming nothing from the left side and trimming nothing from the right side, you're going to get the simple mean. Now if you trim 49.9999% of the data from either, either side, or Windsorize to that same amount, what are you left with? Well, you're left with just the middle value, which is the median. So you can think about this trimmed mean or the Windsorized mean as being a dial. You turn it all the way to one side to zero, you get the regular mean. You trim, turn it all the way to the other side to get the median. So it, it, it's something that, that will um, enable you to um, uh, reduce the influence of outliers without getting rid of them entirely the way, way you do with um, the median. All right, one more concept on, uh, in, in, this, in this video. And that is um, a measure of position. We've already encountered one measure of position, which is the median. So the median is the halfway point. So you're halfway into the distribution. We often care about uh, going other fractions of a way into a, into a histogram. And these are measured by these measures of position. So these things partition some list of data into roughly equal, uh, equal size groups. So if you're in the 90th percentile, what that means is you're 90% of the way into the histogram. So 90% so of the people uh, are, are to the left of you, 10% are to the right. So if you scored in the 90th percentile in the GMAT, what that means is you did better than 90% of the people who took the test, and 10% did better than you. Several of these have special names. So quartiles divided up into four groups. So you have three cut points. Um, I'll just go sketch that onto my sketch pad. Let's, um, let's go, go draw some distribution out here. I'll make it a normal distribution. Here would be my quartiles. Q2 is the median. Q1 is the first quartile. Q3 is called the third quartile. So you have 25% here. 25% here, 25% here, and 25% here. So quartiles cut it into four equal slices. And you have three of them, and you know, these quartiles are so important, they have their own names, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Percentiles uh, divided up into 100. How You can read um, the Oxford English Dictionary. Uh, it says that there's two different um, uses of the word quartile. Let's move on to estimating quartiles. This is one of the more confusing topics. Um, software packages do not agree on how to compute quartiles. So what this means is that if you type a data set into Excel and find quartiles, and type the exact same data set into SPSS and find quartiles, you may get different answers. If you type in some of the examples from Siegel and do either Excel or SPSS, you might get different answers than what Siegel gets. All right, so that's definitely a problem because statisticians don't agree on it. Uh, I guess in, in practice, just use one software package for your, uh, for your project and, and don't, um, you know, don't mix and match. In, um, for, for exams, I think there's a very useful... Um, link to the frequency distribution. I call it uh, my simple rule. And here it is. Look for the first cumulative percent that's greater than or equal to the percentile that you want to find. So let's go put this into practice. I'm going to flip back all the way to the age distribution that we studied a couple um, minutes ago. So this is back on page 30. 
Let's say we wanted to find the first quartile. So what that means we want to go a quarter of the way into the data. So my simple rule said, look for the first cumulative percent that is greater than or equal to the percentile we want. So here's the cumulative percents. Here is the first value that is greater than 25, and that corresponds to age 34. So 34 is the first quartile. If you want to confirm that, look on the two pages in front, and on two pages in front, you will see summaries from the software, and Q1 is equal to 34. Now, let's go back and consider why that is the first quartile. So, let's consider age 33. There are 494 people who, have, who are 33 years old. So, you, if, if you lined up these people from youngest to oldest, at some point you would encounter a chunk of 494 people who were 33 years old. Now, the last of those people get you 22.8% of the way into the data. So you're not, quarter, not yet a quarter of the way into the data. Now, the person after that last 33-year-old 30, 30, 30, is going to be 34. And notice there's 492 of those people. So the first of those 34-year-olds get you a little bit more than 22.8% of the way into the data. The last of those 34-year-olds get you about 25.5% of the way into that data. So one of those 492 34-year-olds will be exactly a quarter, a quarter of the way in. So that is why that is the first quartile. Let's find the 10th percentile. Well, what would be the 10th percentile? It would be this number right here. So 28, age 28 is the 10th percentile. Um, because if we stopped at 27, we wouldn't quite be 10% of the way into the data. What is the 90th percentile? Well, the 90th percentile is age 70, because if we were, again, if we were to stop at 69, we're not quite 90% of the way into the data. So that's how we find percentiles in SPSS. Or sorry, SPSS using a frequency distribution. Um, to do this in SPSS, let's go back and you're going to go back to the place we were just using. So Descriptives Explore. Uh, to get percentiles, go into Statistics and check off percentiles. By default, you don't get them. Hit Continue and hit OK. So now we're going to supplement what we saw before, and you're going to get another box. Oops, let's go back to here. Here are the percentiles. So the median is 100, the 99th percentile is $499, the 10th percentile is $19 down. So that's how we find percentiles in SPSS.